BMACA or BMOQA. It's a long course. It's kind of notorious in, it's weird. When I was on my BMQ, we had an officer come in to talk to us. He was a logistics officer. And I think he was doing a presentation on like, I don't know, tactical breathing. There was like something, one of the, the mandatory presentations we do. And he was like, you guys are going to use this. You're going to use it because you got this course. It's the hardest thing you'll do. And, you know, he's like talking about it. Like his eyes are like just staring off and he's like the water was so cold that day like it was just and then he kind of like came to you and he was like oh you're NCMs never mind you don't have to do this course don't worry about it and then he looked at me and he said except you you need to do this course so I'm like what is this course like I'd heard all about this course it's known as yeah BMOQA BMACA CAP is like the old term for it which was the common army phase um sometimes it's called phase two I think um there's all these different names for it. it's been all these different things over the years but it's the big course uh that they run and it's where you do it's the equivalent if anyone's familiar with the NCM career uh, career progression it's like doing a PLQ and a bit of uh RSCC and advanced small arms all in one course so it qualifies you as an infantry section commander um it's run by the infantry school so it is even though it's for all army officers it's you're still you're still part of the infantry in a way up to that course uh because i like at the end of the day even as a logistics officer like if i'm in a convoy and we come under attack i may have to run a section attack or i will have to do a defensive or there'll be like i need to be trained on a c7 a c9 throw grenades like the pistol is the other one so those are all the things we do in that course. And it's, it's to teach leadership. And like you were talking about, it's doing things in very, very difficult conditions and still being able to think. Mm-hmm. Um, myself and a bunch of people from actually our course, which was really yeah. awesome to see some familiar faces. We ended up on a course uh, out in Gagetown in April. It's Well, sorry, our quarantine started in April last year and the course itself started in May. It was actually kind of the best thing to happen to me last year because everyone I know had a really hard 2020 so (laughs) for us to it was like really exciting because you go in quarantine but you're in quarantine in these barracks in Gagetown and they were actually not bad like everyone had their own private room and it was like a little sort of dorm hotel room and you know you're just you're like mentally getting in the game like now you're watching and you're seeing all these other courses and people out running and you're like yeah like I'm gonna get some it's gonna be good (laughs) so you get like two weeks to get like psyched up for you're not just thrown into it because I found that really challenging on on basic training weekends was like coming out of work mode like civilian work mode and going into army mode and then coming out army mode go back to civilian mode right like it's so tough so I think having a little bit of like a phase where you just get ready for your course and then we got into it right away we were doing we did all like sort of our c7 review and things like that and then we started doing battle procedure which is what we kind of got introduced to on montu so writing orders uh and we did an evaluation on that and then our first field week so there was three field weeks that we had um anywhere between five and ten days and the field is what gets you engaged like everything else you can kind of live with but the field it's crazy. So the first uh, field week for us was a nav week. And that was, I was kind of more like some people think nav week is the hardest week. I think it was, uh, I think it was the most fun, but like also really, really challenging. So leading up to nav week, you're doing a lot of map and compass work and you're also working on, um, it's called a dagger, but it's the, like a big GPS unit the military uses. And Nav week basically involves you're with your section. So everybody has, we had four sections on our course and I was four section, four section, best section. section. But <laughs> we were amazing. We were like quick aside, speaking about ages, we were all old, like old AF. And it was amazing <laughs> because like, we were just all so slow, but our instructors were also old. So they were like, we get it guys. We get it. We're like, oh, thank God. (laughs) Like we were just, I think I was like, I was 31 on course and I was maybe the second youngest in my section, maybe the third youngest. Mm -hmm. Um, So we were all like kind of older. So older people are, I can talk about that afterwards, but like wanting to go into the military, like, oh, you're in good company. There's lots of us out there. (laughs) But uh, yeah, so we were, our section, we, we got split up between our section commander and the two IC and we were 
going through the woods and the, the crazy thing, this is what blew my mind at first. And this is where I think like people have these, these little mental hurdles that you get through. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'll kind of come back to this. Cause like at the end of the course, there's basically nothing in my mind now that I think I can't do because Jeez. I've done like something weirder, like <laughs> I've done something crazy. So like with mapping compass, you get your point and you plot it and you're like, okay, I gotta go here. And normal people look for a path. They look for that kind of thing. And we were just like walking through these woods and there's like a tree in front of you. They're like, okay, well walk around the tree, but keep walking. And I'm like, but these do like these giant shrubs. There's these things called, uh, ar- arbors, arbors, I think. I can't remember the name, but, um, these like really thin branches and like, you can't get through them. Like one uh-huh. guy literally got hung up on them, uh, like on a course screaming for help. Like it was just the trees are dangerous in Gage Town. <laughs> so, like, oh my gosh. <laughs> they're hilarious you like you walk through them and you're walking like you're falling down like just mini cliffs and stuff and you get to these swamps Gage Channel also has tons of swamps and we're like uh sergeant there's like a swamp here like how do we get around the swamp and he's like you're not going around it like do you see a way around the swamp like you're walking through the swamp we're like okay and we're like looking at our map like <laughs> okay here we go here we go and you're, and you're up to here in swamp and you're like I'm just gonna keep walking because you don't know what's in there you don't want to think about what's in there oh. so you just keep walking <laughs> and wow. um yeah that was that was nav so we did a day nav and then we did night nav so you do all that again but in the dark and you're not allowed any light because it's tactical so you don't want the enemy to see you so now you're walking into pitch black in the forest in Gage town every footstep is like I have no idea what I'm doing I have no idea where I'm about to step but it's crazy how your mind gets used to it. Like you start to, you hear sounds in the bushes beside you and you're like, could be another candidate, could be a bear. There was tons of bears. You're like, oh, well, I don't care. I'm just gonna wow. keep walking because whatever. <laughs> like, and, uh, and then when you find a point though, you find a point, they're about a kilometer away. You find your point and you're like, I can't believe I did this. <laughs> like, <laughs> how did I find this point in the pitch black where I can't mm-hmm. even see my foot? where there's swamps and bears and brush and trees and rocks and cliffs. And like, somehow I managed to find this point. So it was <laughs> insanely rewarding. Um, but yeah, it was like, you do your daytime one and then you do nighttime and then you do practice. So you do practice day map, practice, practice night map. And then you do your evaluation day, evaluation night. And then same thing for the dagger. So you're on your feet nonstop all day. Like you're talking about doing stuff tired. Like, oh my God, my, my night nav lasted from 8 p.m. till 4 30 a.m. And I actually didn't find one of my points. So uh Reveille was like 4 45. So I just you had to be back by 4 30 or else they like come searching for you. So yeah, I got back at 4 30 and yeah, just had to keep going. I did not sleep. I did not sleep. Wow. <laughs> like, this was this is what you do. And and yeah, it was it was pretty crazy. So uh and then yeah there was oh my God the rain. There was so much rain and <laughs> oh, it was just a nightmare. Like you're just, you're wet, you're cold, you're hungry, you're tired. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's the whole, that's the whole time in the field. So that was nav. Uh, and then we did some more weapons training and we did a lot more, um, they call it battle school. So that's how you learn, you learn infantry then. And you go into like real sort of infantry stuff. That's very similar to PLQ, RSCC. And that's uh, learning how to do section attacks, uh, defensive operations, stability operations. And um, the bigger one was the reconnaissance patrols, the recce's. Oh, so cool. yeah, they were really cool. And that was one of our, when we went back in the field, we did some practice stuff. We did practice section attacks, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Came out of the field, got our COVID shots. So even though we had two days off, we were like just laid up in bed with COVID vaccine hangover <laughs> and then right back into the field, um, exhausted. And we were doing evaluations on that. And for our recce patrols, they take, they take eight hours or you get eight hours. And what you do is you're leading a group of four to see, so there's like a point that you have to go to. And there's something at the point, like there's either a house or a road or a truck or whatever, and you got to go do reconnaissance on it. So you have to have like a, a drop-off point that's like a kilometer away so that you know, they don't know you're coming. So you coordinate the transportation to that drop-off point. You have to plot your, this is why we did nav, is you plot your point from where your drop-off is to where you're going in the woods. And you like cut across, you lead this group. So that's all the leadership stuff. You lead four people through the woods. 
And then you're like, okay, this is where our point is. And you do all sort of like the hand signals and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then you sort of like do this clover leaf pattern around it. And you've got everybody like watching and sketching and doing security on it and everything. You're there for about an hour. And then you have to take a different route out because you can't go back the way you came. And you get another pickup on that road or wherever you got dropped off. You get like a pickup point and then you go back. And that, all of that, um, so, so from when you get your orders to writing your orders as the patrol commander, to running the patrol, coming back, doing your debrief, all of that kind of stuff, eight hours, uh, which goes by so fast. Um, and then you, like your section members too, like they're not resting during this time, they're building a map model for you because as soon as you have your orders, you're like, okay, like this is what we're gonna be doing. Uh, here are the coordinates. So, you know, your, your buddies are all looking at their maps and they're drawing out the, the train so that like when you're finished writing your orders, you can come over and explain, here's where we're going to go. Here's what we're going to do. So even if you're not on, you're, you're, you're still on, like you're still doing something. Right. And we had five of us that were doing these in our little group. So these were eight hours back to back. So the wow. minute someone finished, they're like, you you're going to order. So we had 40 hours straight of these patrols. So when you're talking about doing stuff tired, think about doing orders, running that coordinates, leading navigation, all of that. Wow. And like, yeah, it's, it's just, and it's day and night. So mine was from 8 PM until uh, that was another one that was 8 PM to 4. AM. <laughs> so crazy. yeah. Like, just want everyone to take that in right now. You know, you're in your yeah. the train is awful or challenging let's say it's wet you don't know what you're mm -hmm. stepping on at times you have to do this day or night you're probably carrying some stuff like you know you have your yep. rifle you probably have like a day pack on I'm imagining or something yeah, and you got your right. tack vest you also have your flak vest on so you're oh, yeah, probably about I think we calculated too. yeah it was about 40 pounds a year at any given time you have on <laughs> wow okay so you're carrying at least 40 pounds and yeah. <laughs> you're walking day and night nonstop for 40 hours and using your brain even when you're not the one giving the orders you're map you're writing down on your map you're making sure yeah. you know you're doing all your side jobs to make the leader's job easier at that time exactly. and making sure your mission's accomplished like that's a lot of work you know I'm exactly sure yeah now going back to your civilian role where you're working you work nights right so you're working yeah. what like 9 p.m 6 p.m when you start yeah I, I work um usually like 8 a.m to 5 30 or sorry 8 p.m to 5 30 a.m p.m to 5 30 so yeah. coming back from your training when you're doing 40 hours straight to your civilian job does that make you kind of say like oh I got this like nights are nothing now type of thing for sure I mean like it's it's a little different because it's still like my civilian job it'll be like seven days straight of that it has a different effect oh. on you but for sure I would say there's a lot, like I said, like my brain expanded as to what I can do. So it's like, cause I like, especially nowadays, I think people get like, this is me. Like I'm talking from a personal standpoint, but like, I would get really caught up on like, if I'm doing exercise, I'm like, okay, I need to find like the best plan or I need to, you know, like if I'm running, I'm like, well, I need to be at this pace and then that pace and then this pace and that pace. And that's optimal. Everything is about being optimal. And like your nutrition is optimal. Your sleep is optimal. Everything is about what's the best I can, I can do. And it almost feels like if I don't do that, all my body is being damaged or something. But mm -hmm. I, like after going on this course, like I moved nonstop for like 10 days and like you are doing sprints, like you're sprinting with a pack on because like you're oh my god that was the other thing like in the middle of the night they would they would bump during battle school it's called bumping so they would just have they, they literally have a group of privates that they hire for the summer to attack the officers and oh like, that is their job That's it would awesome. be great if you're a private yeah if you're a private and you have nothing to do for a summer go do that because it's probably like the funnest job ever uh <laughs> they get to play the enemy force um so the enemy force every night so even when you think you're gonna get sleep we're not gonna get sleep because they're gonna bump you so like you're you're always running you're always packing stuff you're always throwing things on you're carrying jerry cans they're like hoffman grab this hoffman grab that so like at any point you're doing weight training strength endurance whatever and you're barely eating like even in the field like you're eating rations but then you're like you're almost too busy to eat sometimes so you're popping like gummy worms and things like that <laughs> and you're always dehydrated because you never think you're thirsty, but you have no idea how much like just sweat's coming off you and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, like I managed to carry all this stuff, do all this stuff mentally on 
probably about six hours of sleep over the co- course of like 10 days. Um, like, terrible nutrition. Like again, like they give you the calories and everything that you need technically, but like, you're just, you're not eating it. You don't always have time to eat it all. Or you're not feeling hungry. Like your body's just not in that place. Um, mm-hmm. or you're eating like just pure sugar. Um, you're yeah, not, not enough water, not enough sleep, whatever your body's just exhausted, but you can push through it. And I'm like, Oh my God, here I am freaking out that I'm like running at, you know, 6.4 miles an hour on the treadmill instead of 6.8. Oh my gosh. What kind of effect will this have on my body? Like, <laughs> So now I'm like, I can do anything. Like I can, I can go a night without sleep. No problem. I know I can, I can still function. I know like, you're mm-hmm. not going to die. Like there's so many things where like, you're just, you're not going to die. I didn't wash my hands for 10 days and still ate food. I, I eat food off the ground now. I don't care. Like, it's right. like, cause you're just, you have carbon and dirt and who knows on your hands. You're like, I'm starving. I don't care eat. what's on my hands. Like, yeah, yeah. No, like, you're not going to stop putting hand sanitizer on when you're in the field and kind of like make sure everything's nice and then eat your little exactly. meal. You've got to like no, park you- it down and go. <laughs> and go. Exactly. Like there's just so much that like I've been cold, but like, I'm like, I've been as cold as I was in the field. I'm wet. I'm having that wet. Like, it's just all these things. Like it just doesn't, everything is in perspective. It's actually, uh, I don't know if this is going to be a further question, but it's actually inspired me this year to run an ultra marathon. I and saw that. My, what, like, yeah. Or it's a 50 K by okay, my mom. Yeah. So it's, it's a bit longer than a marathon, but, uh, it's, it's a like super technical field one that's up in Halliburton. And for me, it's like, it's not that like, I'm like, oh, I got this or kind of thing, but I'm like, even if I can't run it, I know I can finish it because I probably walked 50 K just in the woods alone in Gage town on like no food or sleep. So like, I'm like I, I know I can persevere. Like it builds up your perseverance and also your camaraderie. Like the, the stories that came out of that course, like we just, I was, I lucked out. I had an amazing course. I had amazing course mates. We just mm-hmm. gelled. Um, it was just amazing. Like I was so happy to be there with them because you're all going through it. You're all freezing together. You're all doing it together. And, um, and like, just, it's such a good time. Like it's horrible at the time, yeah. but yeah. when you look back on it, you're like, I've done something really hard. And I think that's one of the things that people need to do more of nowadays. It's very easy to make things easy. And yeah, it's very easy. Yeah. Even turn like, off your lights. You know, like some people have their lights hooked up to their phones. So they don't have to get up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we're trying to be the, ultra comfortable, but that's not necessarily where the growth is. Right. So exactly. Like growth is in the hard times for sure. And, and that's like, I always just kind of say like the harder it is, the bigger the reward. And like, if you're not feeling that fulfillment or that happiness or that, like, or like, oh, I'm missing something, go do something hard. Cause mm-hmm. I guarantee you when you finish that and you accomplish something, you're like, wow. Like, like, I think probably one of the proudest moments in my life, and I've done some pretty cool things in my life, but I think one of the proudest moments was looking at my watch. I had to be back at my, um, like my pickup point. So I had, we had an MSVS, which is like a big military truck that was coming to pick us up that I had scheduled because these were my orders during the reconnaissance patrol. So I had to get everything down and, you know, you give your orders to the driver and you're like, oh, I hope this works kind of thing. And I ran my whole recce. I got to my point. We did our sketches. I did everything right. Like I did all my commands right. And I remember like going through the woods on the way back. And I was like, oh my God, I think I'm going to be lost. And like everyone gets lost. You're always lost in the woods in Gage Town. It's like, it's like yeah. a joke, like that, like officers are always lost. We are, we are always lost. But like, I was so lost in Gage Town. And I'm just like, oh my God, there's no way that I'm going to make this timing. Like I have no idea where I am. But I kind of like kept my cool. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, all right, the moon is over here. Like I was just doing something. I was like, trying to like, I'm like, the moon is here. And therefore I'm going this way. And like, I don't know. I just kind of went with my guy. I, I, I had a feeling I was going the right direction. <laughs> and I ended up emerging from the woods in like the exact point I went in. Wow. I don't know how I did it, but like I came out there. And um, I think at that point, like we were far enough away that our, thank you. Our, <laughs> our section commander was like, all right, Hoffman, like, yeah, you guys can walk along like to our pickup point. There was like a 500 meter walk. And he's like, mm-hmm. you guys can walk along the road the rest of the way back to your pickup point. That's fine. Cause we were like kind of walking through the bushes and he's, and he's on the road watching us. And he's like, Hey, like your, your mission's complete. You did a good job. Go back to your pickup point. So I'm right. leading them and everyone's walking behind me and we're all in single file. And I look at my watch and it's like, 
like 302 or something. And my pickup was 315. And I'm just like, oh man, like I'm going to make this. And like the moon was coming awesome. down on this like dirt road. And I was like, just beaming. I'm like, I can't believe I did that. Like, I can't believe I just did a recce. Like, and, I, and we made it. Like that's yeah, the that's... amount of moving parts. So like the amount of like effort, moving parts, the skills, yeah. all the things mm-hmm. that go into that. I I don't know if you can really experience that without doing that. You know what I mean? Like it's hard no. to imagine exactly what that feels like until you are sleep deprived, cold, yeah. hungry, tired, and yeah. still completely <laughs> written. You know what I mean? So yeah. I can only imagine the growth that came out of that. Like you said, you're running an ultra marathon now. That's crazy. That's so cool. You're gonna be the yeah. next, you're gonna be the female David Goggins. You know who that is? Uh, I wouldn't go that far. You're going to have to look him up and read his book before you do your ultra marathon. Yeah. Anyway, Navy SEAL guy. He does ultra marathons now. So, Very yeah, I, I've seen him. <laughs> definitely heard of him. Yeah. No, I, I, I think it's just, yeah, it's such a cool thing. And especially like we just learned that stuff the week before. So, like, yeah. again, like with that expansion like of, of my mind, it was sort of like, there's so many limits that I would place on myself. I'm like, no, I need like a year to learn this kind of thing. Like I need, I need preparation. I need, like, I'm always a little bit of a control freak. So for them to just be like, you're going to learn it today and you're going to do it tomorrow and you're going to be evaluated the next day. And you're like, I can't do that, but you can, I can. So yeah, (laughs) Yeah. very, very amazing. That was an awesome training experience. So that was, that was my most recent one. Um, Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I came back at the end of July. So it was like a pretty long course. Right. came back at the end of July and uh I'm just waiting now for my logistics course 